In uh, today's video, I'm going to talk about simple uh, floating point operations in uh, 8086 uh, assembly language. Well, actually, in x86 assembly language. And I'm going to use functions that are still available from the days of uh, 8087 uh, coprocessor. And uh, these instructions are available in all modern uh, x86 uh, CPUs. So they are available including on my laptop, uh, including on my virtual machine where I'm testing these. Uh, so uh, you can still use it and it's very interesting to see how um, these got carried from the original 8087 coprocessor. But before I delve into these operations, uh, first let's take a quick look at um, the 8087 uh, coprocessor and available instructions. Uh, so in uh, wiki books uh, you can find a very brief um, introduction and I highly recommend that you read it if you are not already familiar with uh, the approach for uh, the 8087 instructions. Uh, and uh, there is a list here of the mnemonics with very brief uh, descriptions. Uh, I also recommend uh, you take a look at the data sheet uh, for the original uh, Matco processor. Uh, of course, uh, today's instructions uh, are embedded in uh, the main CPU. There is no need for a, a Matco processor. Uh, but <coughs> still it's uh, interesting to see uh, how this was originally designed and uh, the architecture from the point of view of the uh, assembly language programmer is pretty much the same. Uh, internally uh, it stores uh, numbers in uh, floating point uh, format. Uh, internally it has uh, register stack that uh, can be used. It has a control word, uh, status word, which can be accessed. So uh, I highly recommend uh, that you uh, at least browse through this uh, data sheet. And uh, there are a number of uh, websites where you can uh, get into detail uh, about uh, instruction set reference, uh, for example, FLD, uh, load floating point value, and uh, with good descriptions of uh, what it does. Uh, again, I'm going to leave uh, links in the descriptions, and if you want, I can do a more in-depth video about the 8087 coprocessor, just leave me comments. So, uh, now let's take a look at uh, these uh, easy functions that I've implemented. Uh, I have two very easy functions uh, computing uh, the square value and the square root and then two bit more complex functions uh, computing uh, exponentiation. So uh, this is the first function where I'm computing the square value of a floating point number. Uh, so in uh, the RDI register I have the address of the input number and in RSI the address of the output number. So um, again we must uh, take into account that originally uh, the 8087 was a coprocessor so it was separated from the main CPU. Uh, so there was uh, no way to access the main CPU registers from the coprocessor. And this is true uh, even today. You cannot uh, directly use uh, registers like uh, RACs or RBX or whatever uh, from the MAT coprocessor. Instead, uh, you have to use this uh, FLD uh, instructions which will load a number from memory so in this case I'm uh, loading uh, the number uh, from the address indicated in RDI. Uh, then uh, you are using uh, 87 uh, instructions 
in this case f mol which uh, multiplies uh, the st0 register this is the top of the stack but you can also think of it as a register uh, with uh, itself so uh, basically it computes the square value of uh, the number and then uh, you have to use fstp or fst uh, to transfer uh, data back into memory because otherwise it's only available inside the mark processor so uh, in this case fstp it uh, stores uh, the value uh, from the top of the stack so st0 uh, to the address indicated in rsi and it also pops uh, the stack so it uh, in this case uh, the stack will become uh, empty since we added a single value and now this is popped so uh, the coprocessor stack uh, gets empty and of course i return uh, from the function now similarly uh, we can compute the square root of uh, floating point number so uh, what happens it's quite similar I'm loading uh, the number indicated in the RDI register uh, I'm uh, using uh, FSQRT uh, this is uh, uh, x87 instruction that computes the square root uh, of the number ST0, the result is placed in ST0, and then I'm using FSTP, uh, similar to the previous uh, function, uh, to store the number in the address uh, indicated in RSI. Okay, so uh, there is, uh, in both uh, functions, uh, there are no side effects, no additional registers are being used, so it's quite straightforward. Now, um, let's move on to the more complex functions. Uh, I have uh, a function to compute uh, e to the power of x. Uh, this first one is, uh, I found it uh, online, I documented it, but uh, is a bit uh, more complex than the next one, so I'll go first to this uh, function and uh, which is a regular uh, exponentiation function computing x to the power of y and how this is performed uh, by computing uh, 2 to the power of y uh, multiplied by logarithm of x okay and why this is done like this because uh, we have support for uh, base 2 logarithms in the x87 instruction set uh, but we do not have directly an instruction to compute uh, exponentiation so um, what's happening I'm uh, loading here uh, r8 this will be uh, y so it's the exponent uh, then uh, I'm loading x and uh, now we have an instruction here that uh, computes uh, y times uh, logarithm of x and as you can see it uh, does something else as well it uh, pops uh, the stack okay so initially we had uh, st0 containing x st1 containing y and then in st0 we have this product and uh, st1 disappeared so uh, how you can uh, see this instruction well it computes uh, st1 uh, times logarithm uh, of st0 uh, stores this initially in st1 but then it pops uh, st0 so in this case st1 becomes uh, st0 we have uh, this result here uh, then I'm loading um, one on the stack so the stack is like this uh, I'm loading st1 so uh, it's possible to load not only from memory but from another stack location so uh, 
again this load is basically a push so the stack is like this uh, and then uh, with f prem it's computing the fractional part uh, of the number uh, on the top of the stack so the stack is like this and now with uh, f2 xm1 uh, it computes 2 to the power of uh, the number available in st0 so in this case uh, two to the two to the power of fractional part of y times uh, logarithm of x and it also uh, subtracts one so now if you if you ask me why well i i don't know why uh, this is happening and why we don't have x without uh, minus one but this is how the instruction set works so in this case uh, you also have to do an f add p which uh, basically adds st0 with st1 uh, stores initially in st1 then pops st0 so it becomes like this and this is the reason why uh, initially uh, you had to push uh, one onto the stack so after this f at p uh, we have the stack like this and now using f scale uh, basically it uh, uh, computes uh, 2 to the power of uh, the integer part of st1 and also this gets uh, multiplied with st0 and we know uh, when we multiply to to the power of a with 2 to the power of b the result will be a two, to, a 2 to the power of a plus b so in this case we have 2 to the power of fractional part of y times logarithm of x plus the integral part of y times uh, logarithm of x so basically we have here 2 to the power of y times logarithm of x and this is the result that uh, wanting to obtain however uh, we also have uh, the st1 register on the stack and we need to clear the stack before exiting so uh, what's happening here uh, there's an exchange uh, between the two registers so now we have the stack like this in reverse order uh, fstp st0 this is basically just a pop from the stack it uh, what it does is uh, store the value from st0 in st0 and then it pops the stack so it's uh, basically a pop it removes uh, the first value so now in st0 the top of the stack we have uh, what we wanted so 2 to the power of y times logarithm of x and finally this is stored in memory so now uh, we can use the same approach to compute uh, e uh, to the power of x and in this case uh, we have the same function here so this is the same function uh, but uh, here when we start uh, we load uh, the number x so this will be the exponent but uh, we can use this uh, FLDRL2E which will actually pop on the stack the logarithm of number E okay so we don't need to compute this so this is the difference here we don't use uh, we, we don't load uh, the number E and compute the logarithm uh, instead we push directly the logarithm and then we use a uh, multiplication operation to compute this value and then uh, from here we have the exact same uh, function and um, i've included here also the comments but it's exactly uh, the same function and again at the end uh, the result is stored uh, in memory at the address pointed to by uh, the register rsi okay so uh, this is the implementation 
Um, again, I have uh, the same files here that I've described in the previous videos, uh, including uh, this to string, which um, contains different uh, functions for displaying uh, numbers, actually for converting a number to its string representation. I'm going to use this float32 to string. Uh, I've described this in the previous video, so if you want, you can take a look. I'll uh, also leave a link in the description. Uh, and I have this uh, linux.ism uh, where I have basic functions for uh, console write, for example. And uh, again, this was uh, described previously. I'm going to leave a link in the description. Uh, so I have this test program. So what's happening here? Uh, I'm importing the functions and declaring them uh, external. Uh, I also have a uh, data float here, uh, which contains different uh, numbers uh, and it ends with a zero. So I'm going to uh, run tests on all these numbers until I find uh, a zero. Uh, you can add multiple numbers here. Uh, and um, I have here a series of uh, messages that will be displayed. Uh, I have here a number of uh, so-called test functions uh, and I'm just going to work you through one of these, they are the same. So what happens here, I'm first displaying the message which says square equals. Uh, then uh, I'm going to place in uh, RSI the uh, memory location for the result. Uh, already when calling this function in RDI, uh, it's a pointer to the uh, number that I'm going to use. Uh, then I'm calling the function, in this case uh, f32 square, that I shown you <coughs> just a few seconds or minutes ago. Uh, and uh, then I'm going to display the result and I'm calling this flow 32 to string and then uh, console write. And finally I'm displaying a new line again using console write and that's it. And the rest of the functions are uh, similar. Uh, there is a different uh, message being displayed and a different function being called but uh, it's uh, exactly the same thing so I'm not going to work you through all of this. And what's happening in the main program? I'm starting with uh, RDI pointing uh, to the list of floating point numbers. Uh, then uh, I have this uh, loop here. Uh, what's happening? I'm uh, checking to see if we reached uh, the end of the list. So if uh, we have only zeros, then uh, we can stop as a jump to done and then I'm calling uh, the functions actually I'm first displaying uh, the number and then I'm calling uh, the test functions uh, after all the tests I'm displaying a new empty line uh, so that we can see that we're moving on to the next number I'm incrementing uh, RDI to move to the next number and I'm jumping uh, to the display loop. And finally I'm uh, calling uh, the exit function. So let's take a look at the result. Uh, first I have this uh, build uh, shell script. It's uh, pretty much the same that I'm using in uh, all the recent videos. I'm using uh, NASM as assembler. It's installed in my home folder. I have a video about compiling it. Uh, then I'm using LD for the linker and I'm assembling each file individually and then linking them together. I'm also allocating uh, 1000 uh, for the stack size. So let's build. Okay, We got uh, this uh, executable program, so I'm going to run it. So what we have here 
uh, we have uh, the first number, we have its square, so 1 squared is 1, square root, uh, the uh, function e to the power of 1, which is the e number, uh, then we have uh, x to the power of 1, x to the power of 3, okay? So everything seems to work okay. Then we have 2, and again, uh, we see the results here, 4, 10, 100. And for 100, uh, you see here uh, there is an issue. Uh, e to the power of 100 uh, cannot be uh, computed here. Well, it gives us something, but it's obviously wrong. So you have to be uh, aware of this. You can perform additional checks to see if there was an overflow. Uh, also, uh, when using uh, negative numbers, uh, in some cases, uh, for example, a square, uh, okay, it works fine. Uh, e to minus 1 works, that's fine. But uh, minus 1 squared, uh, square root of minus 1, it's obviously an error. Uh, minus 1 to the power of 1, uh, probably you would expect this to work, but it doesn't work. Uh, why? Because of the logarithm being used. So if you want, you can extend the function to uh, check if uh, there is an integer power. And if there is an integer power, then uh, you can multiply this number. But otherwise, with uh, the logarithm implementation, it will not work unless uh, the base is positive. Uh, and uh, in general, uh, you can perform additional checks unless you know uh, that your numbers uh, are correct and they will work uh, with the implementation. So thank you for watching. Uh, don't forget to leave comments, uh, and like and subscribe. See you next time. Bye.